Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Wings of Liberty Perpetual Randomizer. We are going to be trying something very difficult today, and that means that it is time to upgrade our static defense, because we are going to the dig without any siege tanks. Unlocks a salvage ability, deals 100 damage in a radius of 4 upon successfully sa- uh, we'll take attack speed. <laughs> I'm not sure that this is what we want against the Protoss. I mean, that could be very funny. It seems incredibly bad. <laughs> The, uh, gotta be photon cannons because we can actually repair them. And then we're gonna have to give this a go because we are hitting up the dig with the Quill Gore Alpha. One of the units of all time. <laughs> I don't actually know what the Quill Gore Alpha stats are like. There's something that just kind of dies very quickly in, uh, Heart of the Swarm. Usually they just die to Kerrigan and Zerglings. So we will see exactly what is going on here. I think that this is the mission where we have to... Oh, we start with some Ascendants. Okay. That is a very, very nice start for us. I'm quite happy with what we grabbed right there. So, we're going to be able to absolutely annihilate this early game. Which is good. We kind of need that. And then, I think we have to go full Ascendant. So, what do you do? 250 HP, 3 range, but 24 damage on a pretty quick cooldown. Two base armor. I don't know how expensive these are. They're so slow. They seem very tanky, though, which is decent. Uh, we gotta keep the Ascendants in the back because the game... Oh, gosh, they're so big. <laughs> these feel a little bit problematic. Like, if they're really cheap, then they definitely have a world as a tank unit. But my goodness, they are slow. <laughs> Their damage is okay. We're going to blast these two guys. And then we're going to eat. We're going to eat. And put you guys in the front. We're going to be hit by the Archon here. we got to be very careful about that. I'm not so scared about the Stalker, I think it is. It might be a Zealot or a Sentry, though. Either way, I don't really care. Oh. Do you have to deploy your siege tanks for this to trigger? <laughs> I didn't know that. I guess we're just going to go then. Sure. Got him. Okay. That was that was good. If you don't finish him off there, he actually just stays in the base and starts attacking your stuff. So what we're going to have to do is take an expansion very quickly and then get a bajillion Vespian gas if we want to win this mission. If we can hit critical mass of... Ascendance, then we can do this. But if we can't, then we cannot do this. <laughs> it's just that simple. I don't think that any other unit matters. Uh, we're, I'll check the Quilgore Alpha price, but I'm really just going to get a lot of Ascendance very quickly. We're going to run up here. We're going to... Oh, just two of them so far. Okay, it's three. We pull back. Eat, eat. Take this guy down. One thing about the Ascendant is that it does destroy enemies really, really, really quickly. So that is a big benefit for us. We're going to be able to finish off attack waves and then get somewhere else. Even though our army is very slow, but our fight speed is really fast. So we're going to try to rely on that. And let's do stuff like clearing out this area right now. Because we have that time. We're going to get Scantipedes, we're going to get Photon Cannons, and we're going to get a lot of Ascendants. Uh oh. Uh, you don't hit air, do you? Oh, it hits air! Oh, wait, that's good! We have two units that hit air, this is amazing! I thought I built a depot. Okay, so this area is looking all clear. We have this, and... We got the scout that was up there. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't another one. You want gas? We probably only can afford like two barracks worth of production here. Because they're so gas intensive, these ascendants are. And then they have that healing aura because we got that as an armory upgrade. So we can try to utilize that. But if we can get like 40 ascendants, you know what? Options, hotkeys. Let's uh change up our rapid fire. Oh, actually... No, Immortals. We cannot Mind Blast Immortals, can we? Because they have Hardened Shield and Wings of Liberty. That means we're going to have to transition to Psionic Orb, which is not going to be nearly as good against Pro. Oh, no. Hmm. That's not good. 
I'm... <laughs> uh, Immortals might be the scariest unit just because it would take a million billion... What is it? 10, 11 psionic blasts to destroy one? That's a lot. But we don't want to orb the Protoss because it's just really inefficient. But we got to do what we got to do. I was hoping what we would be able to do is just rapid fire mind blast and blow everything up that way. Get the sentry. Yeah. As I said, I'm being very, very aggressive, just getting on top of this stuff so I can be in position for the next wave and not be hit by double waves. The first wave that is scary is the one that's like, they've got an Archons and Immortals, sir, and, uh... This one can be a little bit scary, but we're just once again going to be very, very aggressive here. Pull back. So I've said this before in this run, but I don't want to focus on the Ascendant forever. And I'm hoping that I can get to a point where we don't need him. This is probably the last mission where I think he's 100% necessary, just due to the way that... Uh, due to the way that we need what is effectively a siege unit here, or the closest approximation we can get. And then we'll be able to transition into a more not monotype unit thing whenever it gets tough. Okay. You do this here, you start in the canyon. How much are these? 150, 75, and 3. That's actually pretty affordable. I I don't hate the Quilgore Alpha. It's definitely... <laughs> It's definitely clunky, but at the very least, it's acting as a really big HP sponge to drain energy from, which is something we really need right now. And then we're going to get the Mercenary Quilgo, or uh, Scantipedes. Okay, this is when it gets spooky. We could use the drill on Immortals. Yeah, I think we got to do that. If they get too close, our men won't stand a chance. I'm giving you manual control of the laser drill. Wait. See if you can use it against the Protoss. That felt weird. All right. You heard the man. Huh. Swing that laser around. We can use it to um, back the Protoss. Do these have barrier? They might have barrier. What's going on? Let me see. Oh, they have barrier. Oh, we're fine. We're fine. They have the Legacy of the Void barrier, which is garbage compared to Harden Shield. Oh, heck yeah, Grandma. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in business. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I was like, that guy died suspiciously fast. <laughs> Usually it takes a couple pulses on the laser drill to actually knock through an immortal. Okay, that means that what we can do is we can keep eating these guys. Remember, these have shields and they do fire damage. And it puts a damage over time effect on the target. So these are amazing. And then we go, options, hotkeys. Oh, this is exciting. This is exciting. We're going to win this mission. It's not going to be easy, but I think that I think I'm feeling okay. Then we are going to change this from T and Q to this being Q. That's going to unbind it there. So now it's my rapid fire key. And I should be able to just wave the mouse on top of them. And the enemies should disappear. Oh, it works. I'm so happy. This is great. What a fantastic plot twist. It is going to be very energy expensive, though. Okay. We do got to get our cannons out, too. We just don't have many minerals because we went for a lot of gas really fast. And I don't regret that decision. I think it was correct. We just got to make sure... I guess the air units are not that scary, are they? Because Ascendants can blow up air. All right. I'll take it. We are eventually going to have to split our forces up as well. That's going to be a little bit dangerous. But hopefully it doesn't happen for a very long time. And we can kind of stick as one group because it's just easier to manage, particularly casters. It's really hard to use casters when they're split into a bunch of different groups. All right, here comes the first wave of air units. Oh, we one-shot scouts. That's good. And prisms. Come on over. Hey. 
So that took all of our energy, but it was 137% worth it. Absolutely amazing. Now we can start building a lot of cannons because we're playing Terran. And our composition is... I mean, we got the bugs with us too, but it's mostly Ascendants and uh, cannons. Oh, you're not cannon. Cannon is spelled with a T when you're playing Terran. Usually it's spelled with a C. I wish we had batteries or something. We can repair the cannons, though, so we'll have to start doing that. And we might as well use this time to go get this bonus. Yeah. <laughs> That's really nice. Oh my goodness. Oh gosh, the cannons are just targeting this guy down. I don't like that. There go the Ascendants. Here, you're a Mitoscarab, you just chill out over there for now. Blast that open. Cool, cool, cool. Hopefully these all go to the same side. Oh gosh, I'm actually low on energy. Yeah, they're all coming over here. We just sit on the high ground. Oh, this is gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be so strong. Ah, <laughs> oh, living the life. This is great. Okay, uh, more cannons. I don't want to have stuff over here attacking my cannons, so I'm just going to do it like this. And then I want to have a little support network that they can go through to repair. So that's looking good. Keep getting depots. And I guess we can use this time to go grab this. We only have to send, like, one SCV. Just for safety's sake. And we're so supply light with this army. It's insanely gas expensive, but it's supply light, which is great. And these cannons are really good, too, versus, like, the airwaves and stuff. Usually, bunkers are, bunkers are a little bit supply intensive. Oh, what does the gas thing do? I forgot that we got, like, the robots that we can drop. What does the robot do? It takes 25 energy. Calls down a robot. 5 damage, 2 attacks, 75 HP. Okay, that's like an early game, I don't want to die type thing. Definitely not what we want in the later stages. And it looks like now it is time to start splitting. Which is where things are going to get a little bit suspect. Uh oh, yeah. Gonna fire orbs because we need the energy for it. You know what? It might be orb time. The enemy might be getting strong enough that we want to fire orbs instead. There's just enough enemies finally. Usually, I don't know exactly what the number is to make it worth it. Uh, oh gosh, where are they? Everybody looks the same. I, that's like Protoss racist, but I mean, like in this bar, it's like a bunch of spooky, edgy guys <laughs> and Artanis. So we're going to go into orb mode and see if that is a little bit more energy efficient, I hope. Perfect. Then they just gnaw on each other and you guys need to gnaw on each other. Uh, I don't like this from this position, actually. Hmm. I kind of like the other rapid fire better. I'm sorry. I know that I'm menuing a bunch here, but, uh, I should figure out where this guy is eventually. There we go. This is a little bit faster. It just feels a little bit better. Plus, it's cooler. Just everyone vaporizes as they get close to you. Okay, let's keep getting upgrades. We'll get more Scantipede companies. Oh, we don't have many guys working over here. Yeah, we got a couple too many repair guys. Uh, where's the drill? I unhockeyed it. Perfect. 
I don't want to use the drill because uh, when the Protoss start coming in too large of a volume, then we're not actually going to be able to beat them. Uh, they're going to drain our energy reserves. Unlike the tank, we don't have that sustained fire. So we need to end this mission as fast as possible. So hopefully things don't get too wonky here. Fortunately, the rapid fire doesn't like overkill or anything. You just hold it and it fires off the perfect number of them. And that's really awesome. These scantipedes have done like basically nothing, but I'm glad that they're there. Uh, the fact that they have a bunch of HP to steal, but they also have a little bit of a shield to keep us nice and safe is very good. I think we want the war pigs as well now that I think about it. For that same basic reason, they have a lot of HP. Though, actually, the war pigs will jump down cliffs and stuff. That'll be annoying. I don't want to deal with that. But I feel so safe. Just got some extra defenses over here, just in case our lines get breached. Set the rally there. We have all the upgrades that we need, and... Oh, well, I guess they're here. Oh, no. No, 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 no. See, this is what I mean. Oh, good storm. No! Beautiful! Come get me, losers. You two up here. I'm rebuilding a lot of guys to repair this side. Go for this. I'm really excited to see what units we get next. No! Don't do it! It's too dangerous. Oh, sniping High Templar is going to be really hard, isn't it? Oh, I'm not looking forward to that. Well, hopefully we don't get super stormed. Oh, goodness. This is where it gets really tough, because there's going to be so many scary enemies that have a lot of range. Um, I'm pretty sure the Colossus, does it outrange the cannon? Cannon has seven. These do not have Thermal Lance, okay. I know they don't by default, but you can never tell during a mod. Because uh, whenever there's a Legacy of the Void dependency, you're never entirely sure what's going to be going on. Not in a bad way, like the co-op dependency, which just breaks everything. But uh, more in a just like, it's all in the air because so many things have changed throughout the decades. Decades? <laughs> throughout the decade. Okay, you guys are going to be on hold position. Let's just get you out of the control group. If Ursadani is the one that tanks the Colossus, I'm okay with that. Cool. Nice! That went so well! Oh, but here comes a lot of them. Get our energy back. Pull back a little bit. This is such a precarious strategy. <laughs> it's like so good until it isn't. Okay, we gotta keep eating. Manage that energy well. We only have 20% remaining. Perfect. I hate Vespian gas. You guys just over here. At this point, we don't really need this. It's gonna get in the way if it's over there, so we're just gonna pull it over here. Like, it's just a little bit of minerals. And then a lot of guys coming on this side, so we're going to have to watch the energy after this fight. We're going to lose a lot of it. Coming on to the left next. Eat, eat, eat. We got to get that eat on cooldown. Then we come over here, and no high Templar. Perfect. I'm going to throw down a save. Feeling very, very safe right now. But uh, that final wave where they just keep coming and coming... That is going to be where we potentially get broken. But not our will. Our will will stand resolute. I want to make sure that I have some amount of repair money. But I definitely can build more backup cannons. Then this guy is just kind of sitting over here to uh, 
buffer, that sort of a thing. Oh, you do not have all the energy you need. I think that there's going to be a voice line very soon. I don't know when the voice line comes out and he's like, you are the poopy jerk man, Rames Janor. Oh, it's the air unit wave. It's not the one I was thinking of. I know that generic Taldorim executor who doesn't have a name until it's given later in a... Or no, was he named because of a portrait? I think that's how Nyon got his name. Come on, I'm wiggling it on him. Please explode him, please. I said please twice. There we go. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, the Taldorim executor you fight, his name is Nyon. Uh, if you don't pay way too much attention to the lore, it's nigh and impossible to know his name. I'm not sorry. Alright, we are supply capped. Or rather, we are gas capped. We have no more gas. We'll make more SDVs, so we have lots of repairies. Oh, we lost a guy. Lots of eating. Rapid fire is just such a gratifying experience. It's one of those things that probably shouldn't be in the game, but because it is, I will utilize it to its fullest potential. I mean, if StarCraft were a fully single player game, I don't see any issue with it in single player. He says as he defends his own practices. <laughs> There's no problem with this thing that's incredibly strong as long as I'm the one that's using it. That's how it works. Go ahead. Ask, I, may listen. I thought that we got a... There's usually like a voice line where they're like, Send everything, men. These, did we just beat the mission too fast? Alright. I'll take it. Maybe it's time-based. Maybe he says it at, like, 30 minutes. Oh, here we go. Of course, it's at 2830. But your guys aren't even going to get here. I know that if you use the drill even a little bit, I guess that's what it's timed out for, is people who actually use the drill to defend themselves. Then they have to fight against the stuff. But if you don't use the drill, then you don't have to fight a lot of guys. That was remarkably clean. I am shocked at how well that went. We only lost like five units. Watch, it's gonna say five. No, we got stormed, it's gonna say 12. Okay, 35. <laughs> but some of those were like the Scorpion dudes. They don't count, they're not real people. All right, let's see what our options are. I don't know how options work on the Protoss missions. I'm gonna have to be confused about that. Uh, if I click this, does it say anything? No, it doesn't. Oh, skip Zeratul missions. If pressed, sets the Zeratul missions is completed and gives you research from all main and bonus objectives. However, Zeratul will be unhappy with you for skipping is important. <laughs> okay, so these do not matter. As a result, I think what I'm going to do is off screen, I will complete individual missions after we do uh, certain checkpoints. So what I'll do is... After this video, I will beat the or I will have the first one done. I'm not actually going to play it for real, I'm going to be honest. Then after Mobius Factor, number two, after Supernova at number three, and after Maw of the Void, number four. Hey, this is Grant from 5 Minutes in the Future here. During my sign-off, I completely forgot to showcase the new units, which is, you know, an important part if I want you guys to tell me where we go. So uh, our options are on Haven, we can get the Corsair, or on Tarsonis, we re-roll into... The infested military transport. Minimal security. If we intercept the transport. All right, guys. Do you want the Corsair or the infested military transport? I think. I think I know what's gonna happen. Okay, and then I uh, I went to the laboratory, and we have a very cool option here. So the first option was SCV reactor. The second one, mercenaries gain extra charge and have reduced cooldown. Absolutely going for that. And then I decided, of course, because we have that, let's go to the cantina and grab the siege breakers. 
which are uh, Quilgore Alpha with extra health and damage. These guys are going to be chonky. And then I went to the Armory. I'm sorry, you don't get to see my first reaction for this one because it was very funny. But uh, we got Juggernaut Plating, baby! Juggernaut Plating! The other one is they steal resources on attack. I don't think that's going to be that useful, but I think that Mercenary Quilgore Alphas with Juggernaut Plating are going to be effectively immortal, and <laughs> that's beautiful. And then I noticed as well that Advanced Construction allows SCV to repair biological targets. So we're going to be getting that one pretty soon. Uh, all in all, that is a very interesting setup. I am very excited to learn what the Infested Military Transport does. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.